Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today uh, on uh, Civil 3D, drawing and displaying 3D models in Civil 3D. Um, we, uh, yep, thank you, Seth. So some just some important announcements for you guys before we get started here. Uh, all attendee lines will be muted. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, anything like that, as we go along, please send them through either the chat box or the question and answer box. And uh, this webcast will be recorded and sent out to you if you registered for the presentation. Okay. Any questions, anything like that, as we, uh, you know, for later after this presentation, you can always give us a call at 305 445 6480 or shoot us an email at info at ddscad.com. All right. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Seth. Go ahead, Seth. Take it away. All right. Thank you, Alan. And welcome, everybody. All right, so the agenda for today uh, is basically uh, a lot of this is kind of an, I, I think I wouldn't say it's 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 greatly needed, but it's an underutilized option here as far as um, 3D models. Basically, what I'm going to show you here, I'll actually I'll back up to the beginning. This is actually a, a real life project. Uh, this right here is a box culvert that um, I made in Civil 3D. Actually, just AutoCAD. It's not really Civil 3D that we're doing here. And then I and the reason I do that, you might you know, for those you have done box culverts or, 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 or robot design where you have a bridge or a box culvert, maybe you say, well, I, I just do it by hand, who cares, you know, what's the big deal? Well, what if it changes or what if it moves or things like that? Or, you know, when you have a vertical exaggeration in the profile or the cross section, sometimes it's kind of a little bit pain in the butt to do that. Instead, I'm gonna show you here, you know, within a half hour, I'll have this box culvert done and it's, it's not hard. And then what you can do is you can project that. So this is an actual real life project and this box culvert is displayed in the profile and the cross section views. Um, this over here, this actually modeling area here, this is the, the diversion area. Uh, I also modeled that. We're not going to go over that today, but I just want you to just kind of see that, you know, it's kind of the stuff that you can do. Of course, I did that not just to make it look pretty. This was actually to get volume calculations and quantities and things like that, because obviously, I, you know, I've got a quite amount of fill here or whatever I need. So we have to we have to quantify that. So what we're going to talk about today, well, uh, well, I'll create the 3D model. I'll touch base on just some basic 3D modeling kind of tips and editing tips and stuff like that. And then we'll project it. I'll show you how to, how to actually do that. In fact, I'll probably, I'm going to actually show you how to do that right at the beginning because it's very simple. I want to just kind of show you the finished product. Um, and then, you know, just because I know I, that was probably only take up a half hour of my time, uh, I figured I'd go over how to model a dumpster pad drive kind of area just to kind of give you an idea how to, if you've never had to kind of do that kind of stuff before. So some modeling tips there. All right. So as you guys probably know from me, I'm not very big on um, PowerPoint. So I'm going to jump right into um, Civil 3D here. And let me just, I'll, I'll go ahead and just start. Actually, let me just show you the finished product and I'll show you how you how easy it is to kind of do this and why you do that. So first of all, actually, let me go into the uh, planet profile sheets here. So again, you know, I've got a planet profile sheet. This is an actual project. It's actually out to bid right now. It's going to be constructed uh, next year, probably. Um, and basically, if you look here, I've got my roadway coming through. We've got this little creek or you know, a good sized creek over here. We've got this this culvert here with a three box, uh, three barrel box uh, culvert extension. Okay, actually, no, a brand new box culvert, not, not extension. So if you look right here, this is actually the 3D model right here. It's a 3D solid, and it's right in the right spot at the exact location at the exact invert elevations that I need it to be. You know, and just to kind of show it to you in 3D, this is exactly what it kind of looks like. Now you'll notice that the uh, the the headers up here are actually missing because one of the things that I do in, in the profile, I don't want that to be displayed. I just want to show this actually at the elevation of where this box cover will be, because it's actually not at, actually at the road, right? We have dirt on top of that, that part there. So you can do that in two different ways, whereas in the cross-section view, I'd actually want to see that. So the, it's very simple. Once you have that 3D solid, I can just simply select my profile view, and I'll click on Project Objects at Profile View. And again, as I always say, when you don't know what to do, look to the command line window. It's asking you to select the object to add to the profile view. So I'll just click in my uh, model space up here. I'll pick the 3D solid. And then you definitely want to have a specific style that you want to create for the different uh, projections, whether it's plan profile, I'm sorry, profile or, or cross-section view. And I'll just click OK here. And as you can see, it pops in automatically exactly at the correct elevation right at where I want that to see. And the great thing about it is it's vertically exaggerated. Notice I'm calling out the invert elevation right here. And of course, this is the, uh, like I said, I want to see the the the, uh, the header part up here because that's actually, uh, that's actually kind of misleading because this is cutting it at the center line, right? So I just deleted those. And of course, in the cross-section view, it's very, it's very similar. 
Uh, basically, I'll just go ahead and select my cross-section view, and then in the ribbon, in the contextual ribbon, I'll pick pro project objects to, to uh, view. Uh, again, select objects to add to section view. I'll pick my 3D solid, press enter, and then I'll just make sure you toggle on drawing crossings and drawing projections here. You pick your style, click OK, and now that's in there. But in this case, I left the headers up here because, as you can imagine, I'm in a cross-section view. I, I actually want to see them. And I'll show you very easily how you can remove those and edit those and, and all that kind of stuff. So again, this is one of the advantages. And again, this cross-section view is exaggerated by two. So I don't have to worry about you know, figuring out the vertical exaggeration if I draw this, drew this by hand. Can you do that? You sure can. I'm not saying you can't, but as you can see, it's very simple to kind of do that. Um, and just so you know, in case you ever want to get quantities, although, you know, this typically we, we use MathCAD, we use the DOT's program to, to actually create our, our, our box culverts. And they give you a quantity and everything, but just as a little tidbit here, if you run the measure command, and I'll just set this to um, volume, and I'll go ahead and select my object here, uh, you'll notice it actually does give you a quantity. So that's your cubic yards of, of uh, you know, concrete. Now, of course, again, you would get that with your, you know, with the program, but again, it's just kind of, it's, you actually have an actual object here. So, and this is just the box cover, but the, you know, the, if you can imagine anything that's kind of 3D related, but it's not necessarily model related, or, or maybe it's not something that you can easily do with, let's say, a, you know, a pipe network or something like that, you can draw 3D solids. And hopefully after this webinar, you'll see it's really not that hard to do. Okay. So this is basically the dimensions of my, um, box culvert right here. It's a 35.67 by 47. And I've got other dimensions here that help me kind of, you know, figure out exactly what I, how I'm going to do this. It's, like I said, it's three barrels, 11 by six, um, separated by 0.67 uh, feet and so on. Okay. So this is what I'm going to actually do to, uh, you know, generate this box culvert. Okay. Now I'm in a drawing where it already exists just so I can basically kind of, uh, just to, I was going to show it to you in here, but again, it's the same thing, right? It just basically just has the three box and that's the finished kind of product. So we'll go ahead and create this from scratch. Now this one is actually at the correct elevation and everything, but I'll show you how to get there very easily. Now what I recommend you guys do is make sure that you're just, for the most part, when you start, just that you're in the world coordinate system. So again, if you're not familiar with that, you type UCS and then just W again, when you don't know what to do, look to the command line window, W for world, and you're just gonna kind of start. So again, this is a 35.67 by 47 um, uh, length uh, box cover. So little trick here, if you hold the shift key down and middle click, and if I, pretend like you're panning, like if I, if I pan, I hold the middle mouse button down, right? If I hold the shift key while doing that, that rotates the view in 3D, just to kind of show that to you. See, if I rotate the view, it's actually rotating that object. Now, your best friend here is the view cube. If you're not familiar with it, get used to it. If it's not turned on, you go to the view tab, viewports pan, viewport tools panel, and then view, to, view cube is right there. Because as I'm sure all of you, if you ever worked at, looked at a 3D, you know, that optical illusion, you know, if you look at something that's upside down, all of a sudden your brain twists it and now it looks right side up, especially when you're on wireframe, which is the visual style that I'm in right now. So if you if you look at this long enough, now all of a sudden it looks like it's on top, but if you look up here, it's actually not. I'm actually at the bottom, right? So this is the one of the kind of thing you have to kind of keep your eye on, because if, if not, you'll kind of get lost as to which edge and which things that you actually want to, what edge you're actually kind of on, all right? So I'm, I like to be an isometric, and again, a little trick, if I just click on right there, I can just, you know, set my view to southwest isometric, northeast isometric, whatever, whichever one um, I pick on this view cube, because that's, that helps you kind of see the, the elevations of the actual object. So I'm just going to start drawing this thing. So REC rectangle, right? Just to start the rectangle command. I'm going to pick a point anywhere in space. It does not matter because I'm going to basically eventually move it to the right spot and I'm going to use um, the UCS to, to go around where I need to kind of go. All right. So again, like I said, this is a 47. So I'm just using dynamic input. So 47 comma 35.67. And then basically that's now my, 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 the base of my kind of uh, rectangle. Right? We're just basically drawing a, a cube and then we're going to cut it up is what we're basically doing, right? It's very simple. Now, a little trick here, you can use this functionality or you can use what's called the press pull machine uh, the command, all right? A lot of, you know, you might see other people, you know, going into the 3D workspace, which is right down here and trying to find those tools. I'm a keyboard guy. I start, I've been using CAD for so many years. I just type stuff in. It's much faster. It's a much more efficient methodology. I'm not going to bother trying to find the tools. It, it just works better. There's also a lot of keyboard shortcuts that you can do. So for instance, the press pull command, if I hold down control, shift, E, and hover over the face or area of a closed 
entities or closed entities, it immediately highlights, as you can see in the drawing, if you look at my command line window, it says implied face X. It's basically the press pull command. And when you click, it starts to press pull that. All right. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, there are some little, I don't want to call them bugs. They, they would say works as designed, but in my mind, they're kind of like, they, you just have to know what's going on. Sometimes your UCS moves to that spot and, and you don't want it to. So just be aware of that. Okay. Right now it's, it's staying right here, you know, at zero comma zero, but it may move. All right. So uh, I'm going to do my height of the total box cover structure, which is 11.02 and just press enter. All right. Now, again, I'm, I have my, another screen. I'm looking at my dimensions here. And so basically the first thing I want to do is I'm going to actually, I want to do the footings here. Okay. So one of the things I recommend you turn on is go to your little hamburger icon. That's what they call that thing right here is the hamburger icon. And if you look up here, um, I'm going to turn on, I think it already is on, but you want 3D O snaps turned on. Uh, you want to put dynamic input on, of course. And um, there's this other one called dynamic UCS. Turn it on so you can turn it off because you don't want the functionality. It, it kind of gets in the way. It's better to just use the, the snapping to kind of work with, with, with 3D modeling or, or 3D, 3D, 3D uh, areas where you're drawing. So if you look over here, if I click on this, this is the 3D O snap options and I can turn on and off the different snaps that I want. Perpendicular, a knot, nearest to face, midpoint on edge, center of face, vertex, et cetera. Those of course are different than your regular O snaps, which are right here. You would call these the quote unquote 2D O snaps. Now that said, 2D O snaps, do work with 3D objects. I'm going to use them a lot right now, okay? But it's nice to have that turned on if I want to wrote, you know, actually snap to something on the 3D solid, all right? All right, so I'm going to basically draw the footers first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the line command. I'm going to draw some basic lines because I want to get up to a certain distance and then project it across here and then push this face in by that distance. So I'm going to start the line command and I'm going to say from. So shift right click. Whoops. Shift right click and then from, I just type F. I wanna be from here. Notice that little, the, uh, I, um, I apologize, I'm colorblind, it looks blue to me. Maybe someone will say, hey, that's not really blue, Seth. But the little icon right there, it's uh, the 3D O snap. So if I click that, that just picked the from location. Then what I do is I hover, acquire, turn on O tracking. I need to be two feet above here. So two, enter. That starts the ob that starts my line command two feet above. Notice how I'm not changing the UCS. I'm, I can work on this 3D object by simply just getting to the points using the from option and using the Z value, et cetera, okay? I'll do a shift right click and go perpendicular, regular AutoCAD perpendicular, and just snap right there, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to the other side because I have this on both sides. And again, I'll just pick the end point going there and the end point going there, okay? Now again, remember the press pull. So if we look at my dimensions here, I've got to push this in 1.5. Okay, that's what I actually have to push that in by. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do that. So 1.5, so Control Shift E, hover, and then click. Notice how it's now, because that line is there, that's the cool thing about press pull. It finds that edge and says, oh, I found an edge. I'm going to leave that part there, but wherever the edge goes above it or below, wherever I clicked, it's going to it's going to start to press pull that area. So I need to be uh, 1.5. All right. So now I've got that done. Now again, I'm going to look at my view cube because I'm going to hold hold the shift key down, middle click like this. All right. Control Shift E again. Click. Push in, and then I want to go 1.5. And as I'm doing this, I, I do check things in the object viewer to make sure that everything is doing what I need to, okay? Because again, the view, the fact that I'm in 2D wireframe does sometimes kind of throw you off a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that polyline. I don't need it anymore because now I've got my shape basically. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna now draw the footers. Um, actually, I need to basically, yeah, draw the footers that, that, that go down. All right, so this is going to be um, from here, it's going to be down, or I'm sorry, it's going to be over uh, 1.167. So I'll start the line command again. Shift right click, from, snap. I actually click, right? You want to be from that point. Now, it does grab that point. I'm going to O track. This is why you want to be, in, you know, like world at zero, because you notice how polar tracking is just taking on the, you know, it's, it's set to north basically at this point, all right? So I want to be uh, 1.167, press enter. So I'm from there, shift right click, P for perpendicular, and snap. And I'll and I'll just copy it, right? So I'm just gonna use a regular kind of copy command, press enter, I'll snap here. And again, 
same functionality, shift right click from, and then snap. And if it doesn't get it, see how it didn't acquire that point? That's okay, simply hover over it, don't click, and then track this way, and 1.167, enter. All right, now, I've got that, control, shift, E, hover, click, go down, I need to go down by 2.2. And now I've got that. Now I need to go underneath, and this is again why you wanna look at your view cube, because this is where your brain will really throw things off. What I sometimes use a trick here um, is I do a shift middle click and I rotate the view because it kind of helps me see where everything kind of is, okay? All right, um, and actually notice how my UCS got messed up here. That's so I'm gonna just basically just type in UCS. It does happen sometimes. And I'll just type D for W, or W for, uh, for world, okay? All right, let me get my bearings again. Um, all right, and I'll go ahead and go here. Now my view cube did disappear. That's okay. Sometimes that happens too. All right, but I kind of I have an idea of where I am. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and start the line command again. And this needs to be 1.5 feet from here. So shift right click from, and we'll snap. Acquire, don't click. Go here. 1.5. Enter. Shift right click and then go perpendicular. And then I'll just copy that again. Same kind of functionality here. Right, copy from snap go this way 1.5 enter and i'll shift right click to go underneath control shift e click and i need to go up that footer is 1.167 1.167 enter again notice how it's 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 messing with the ucs so again just kind of keep an eye in it that's what that control that the implied um does all right if i go into object viewer let's just check things out and everything looks pretty good so far. Actually, it looks really good. And now I just simply need to do the, the barrels here, all right? As you can see here in 10 minutes, you know, I'm getting this done and I'm gonna be able to use this in basically all other parts of my, my drawing. Let me go ahead and delete those lines, I don't care. There's a variable called DELOBJ. I believe it should delete those. I think if you set it to, I can't remember the variables. If you just, you know, go to here, if you go to press F1 while you're in the middle of a command, little that'll open it up here. And basically, or at least it should, yeah, it's supposed to open up the help, but it didn't. So you just do a, just type up, you know, do a search up here for Dell Obj. I always forget the, um, what they, what the each one means. All defining geometry is retained, one, three, delete. It is supposed to delete them, but I guess because I'm not actually using the press pull command, that's why it's not deleting lines. But usually any 3D sol solids that are created from geometry used, that will, number three usually will delete them. All right, so now I'm gonna do these, um, the, um, Let's see here, let's make sure I get my view set. I, without the view cube, it's kind of, let me see if I can toggle it off or on. Actually, I, yeah, there we go, okay, that's better. So I, there we go, that's perfect. All right, so now I want to start drawing my box culverts from 0.67 this way with 11 by 76 rectangle. Now, so the only issue with that now is if I draw a rectangle right now, you'll notice that the, the way AutoCAD works is, if you look at the UCS right over here, right? Uh, I know that if you've never done 3D, it's hard to visualize. You kind of get got to get the hang of it. The XY plane is is done parallel. So no matter no matter where I draw, I can only draw in that plane. For instance, if I snap up here, it draws it at that elevation, but it only draws in that plane. So I have to rotate the UCS to this plane. Now, AutoCAD or Autodesk added that dynamic UCS functionality to do that, but when you need to use snapping for like to come from a certain point, it messes it all up. Not a big deal. All you gotta do is a couple of things. Actually, all I gotta do is get that view in that plane. So what I do is I simply select the UCS. I don't know if you knew you could do that, but you can. Hover and then just click on it. And what I can do is I can pick this point here. I'm gonna temporarily move it up here. Notice how I can actually go on that plane. I'm now on that plane. So now zero comma zero is right here. Now in the world of civil engineering, this is scary because you should never put, you know, you never move the UCS, but of course we're just doing this and we're gonna put it back to world, okay? So I'm gonna start the rectangle command. Now, knowing that I'm now in that plane, and again, just to show this to you, if I start the rectangle command, notice how it's drawing in the plane of that of that face of that, um, of the box culvert. So my zero comma zero is right there. So I need to be 0.67 over, in the X direction, but zero in the Y direction. So guess what? I can just start the rectangle command and type 0.4, I'm sorry, 0 0.667, 0 0.667, comma, zero. And it starts it exactly at the right spot because my UCS is actually right there. Okay, you can change it. Okay, we'll change it back afterwards. So this is an 11 by six. So 11, comma, six. All right, there's my opening. And I'll just basically now copy this one here 
going from this is my base point to here. Oops, let me undo that. I messed up. Let's go here and then here. All right. And there's my openings, but again, nothing's open yet. So again, there's a couple of things I can do. I actually, for these case, because I'm going to keep repeating it. Now, as you start to get more faces on your 3D solid, the control shift E sometimes has a brain fart and it, and it just kind of gets the wrong ones and it, it messes up. Your best bet when you come to like things like this, just actually type in the press pull command. And then what you're doing is you're clicking on the area and it gets it much better. So click and push all the way out and then click, push all the way out, right? So this is the faster way because I don't have to basically press control shift E, click, click, control shift E, click, click, right? That's faster, all right? And basically that, that's really it. So within 20 minutes, not even 20 minutes, five, 10 minutes here, I now have my box covered. So this is not a hard thing to do. That's why I say, just draw it here in 3D and then put it into your three, your, your different drawings that you're plotting from and then project the views, okay? All right, now the only issue, let me set my world or the UCS back to world. So the way you do that, if you click on this, you can hover right here and go world. That's another faster way to do that. So then now it's back at world, okay? So one of the things of course now is you need to get this to the correct elevation. So if you select, so the couple things that you, you know, if I basically what you want is, you know, this is this point right here is your quote unquote invert elevation. Let me actually delete the other. Should have deleted those, that's odd, because they'll object set to actually um, uh, three. Anyway, this right here, this point is my quote unquote, I want this to be my zero point because that way I can move it up to the correct elevations, right? If I just start the line command, keep an eye down right here on the status bar and I hover, what's my elevation? My elevation is actually two. Remember, I drew the box here. So that's really where, where zero actually is. So I want to just move this down. So all you got to do is just, you know, move command. I'm going to go straight down. I have polar tracking on. Notice how the Z is in because I'm in 3D. And I'll just type um, two. And now if I hover and, or if I snap to here, notice how, if you look, again, if you look down here, right, this is at six and this is now at zero elevation because I moved it down. So all you have to do is just basically, you know, I use, I like to use grip editing, but I, you can just pick here. When you do that, when you pick this, the grip appears, this basically is your centroid. So I can just pick that B for base point, snap, and then I would just polar track to the elevation 145.63, whatever that is. And now my box culvert is at that actual elevation. Okay. So that's how kind of easy it is. And of course, yes, you know, when you're in the, um, you know, if you go back to top view here, if, if let's say it's, it's skewed, what I would, of course, I, I would have done this first, just so you know, I, I mean, you can do it afterwards. It's not a big deal, but basically just, you know, you, you, you do, you do the rot rotate command and then you just, you know, rotate it to whatever angle you need to be at. You can just do a reference, the reference option, right? So for instance, if let's say, you know, I put this here, let's say my, 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 my angle of my road is that way. All right. So I'll just, you know, rotate. And then I'll just snap here and then R for reference. And then I'll pick here and go perpendicular. And then there, I'm at, I'm at that angle. That's how simple it is, okay? Uh, and of course, it's still at the correct elevation and everything because I didn't change the Z or snap to anything differently in, in the Z, okay? All right, so that's actually, so that's that, that's how easy this is. It's not, it's not hard to do, especially kind of simple structures like a box culvert, all right? Uh, of course, if you get more complicated stuff, then that's that's a little different. But you can do all kinds of things. I mean, you can do um, you know wells, uh, things like that. If you want to project those into your into your uh, profiles or things like that, you can you can do that very easily. Okay. All right. So one of the things also. So if you remember in my plan and profile sheet, all right. Notice how I'm actually I'm getting it at the center line. So the actual you know the 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 uh, the, the header parts up here are not by the road, which they should which they normally actually are, right? So how do you get that to work? How do I edit this afterwards? So I want to show you some editing tips, because obviously everyone makes mistakes. Let's say you typed in, or let's say actually um, I, I'm going to show you how to do that. But I also I want to convert this, let's say, to a, a two barrel box culvert. That's really easy to do. This is what I'm trying to kind of you know, give you some ideas here, all right? So in this case, I'm going to actually set this to um, southwest isometric or southeast. Doesn't matter to me. I don't. I don't really care. I am going to set my um, visual style to conceptual. That way, I can see it a little bit because this will help you too when you want to make edits. All right. So for instance, 
let's say we were talking about that um, uh, example of in the profile view, I want to get rid of these headers up here. That's unbelievably simple. So the way that you edit 3D solids, one of the many things or one of the, the things that you can do is you hold the control key down and you hover over the different faces. Notice how it's highlighting as I hover over the face, as I hover over the edge, and then you pick. When you pick, you'll notice it actually picks the edge. If I press escape, control pick. If I pick the face, it picks the face, all right? Um, now, by having the three, the, one of the views in a 3D, quote unquote, 3D type view, you get this gizmo, right? And this gizmo can do a lot of things for you. So for instance, again, if I'm cutting this in a profile view and I want to show that in the profile, I want to get rid of these, all I got to do is pick on this right here, shift, right click, endpoint. I'm going to snap right there and there goes my header. So again, hit escape, control, pick, pick the gizmo, shift, right click, endpoint snap here and it's gone. Nothing else about the geometry has changed. It just got rid of those footers, all right? This, that functionality is useful with many different ways. So for instance, if let's say I wanna pull this edge in, if I hold the control key down and pick this face, notice how it gets just that face, right? Well, what if I wanna get this face as well? Control key, pick. I'm gonna go inside here, control key, pick that one and pick this one. Because what I'm doing now is if I do that, I can actually grab this so it picks every single face and it moves the whole thing. Uh, one of the other things that you, that you wanna do is if you hold the shift key down, I believe yeah, you hold the shift key down and you pick it, you'll get what's called hot grips. That's what they call them. Yes, that's an actual word by Autodesk. And did I get that one? There we go, so shift pick here. And now if I pick this here, it actually will do all of them exactly. Whoops, I don't wanna do that. Let me pick it over here instead. Notice how it's picking all of them. And now, so think about this for a second. Obviously every road is different. If you have different box culverts, different widths, I can literally draw one box culvert and then I can modify it as I need to. So you notice how I'm stretching by using those hot grips, the whole thing. And I can, of course, if I lock my Z, or whatever, uh, actually, I, I, yeah, I, I, this one I've already rotated, but I could just, I, I would just type in a distance of, you know, whatever that distance needs to be, whether it's five feet or whatever, okay? So one of the other things that you can actually do as well is this, like I was saying, let's say I wanna make this so I can get, I wanna get rid of this third barrel, hold the control key down and then click, press delete on the keyboard and notice how it's starting to get rid of all the different parts of it. Now, let me actually undo that because I bet if I hold the control key here, and I do hold the hold control key here and here, uh, actually, nope, not that one. We'll, we'll control shift this one. So it gets rid of that one. Let me try to delete that, there we go. So when I press delete there, notice what it does. It actually gets rid of the whole space. And now what I would do is I would hold the control key and pick this face. And now I can actually pull that in to, I should be getting all the faces. Uh, that should actually be working. If I do this here, there we go. Notice how it's grabbing. And now I would basically do like from, I would actually change my base point, watch this, to here, from here, and then I'll track this way here, and I'll type 0.467. Notice how I'm able to do that. That I mean, that's how simple this is. I now have a two barrel box covered, right? Again, if your photo changes, not a big deal, right? So. You know, it's the same exact kind of functionality. If I need this footer to change, control pick the face and then pick the grip in the middle and I can now modify that. Again, I'll change it to my base point to here. That way I can actually get a good distance. And if I sh say shift right click, I'm sorry, let me do shift right click from and I'll snap, oh, let's do this right here, from here, right? Little trick, if you, if you, if you near us and you pick an edge, I can type in 0.5 it now went 0.5 feet from that spot. I mean, that's how simple the stuff is. It's really not hard. So you start with one 3D model and you can modify it as you need to. And of course, as you can imagine, you can make a block, make a block of one, insert it, explode it, and then you have the ability to modify it as needed, okay? So that's basically um, creating a 3D solid, um, modifying it, 
uh, and then moving it to the elevation that you need to, to move it to. All right. Again, don't forget that I've, I've actually had made the mistake myself where I I just moved it up to the elevation and I forgot that this elevation right here, actually, sorry, this one was at zero because that's where I initially started it. Okay. All right. So let's delve into our other um, thing that we we're going to discuss. Uh, well, let's go ahead and model a dumpster pad drive. All right, just for the heck of it, I felt like throwing this in there because I knew I, I was only going to have like a half hour to to show the three model. And again, any questions you guys have, you know, feel free to put them in the um, chat panel, and we will answer them at the end of the uh, at the of the presentation. I'll, I'll definitely give enough time for it. All right, so let me show you the what I what I had to do here. So this actually um, is one of my projects here. It's a 111 townhome uh, site. And basically, uh, we actually had to, of course, put a, a, a garbage pad here. Uh, we initially had it actually with just one, and then the city came back and said, oh, no, no, we're sorry, we made a mistake. You actually need, uh, you might need three in the future. So we had to make it so that we, this, this hat, we made it a little bit wider here. Let me show you the finished product. So I'll, let me show you the road. And I've actually got this cool dumpster block here. And basically, as you can see, here's my road part of this, um, subdivision or, or townhome and it, of course it looks really nicely it's modeled pretty pretty darn well uh, as you can see it's coming off of the road here and my road is actually sloping down this way and the water is coming down this way it's all going down everything's working out rather nicely okay so this is the finished product we have curb and gutter all that good stuff so I wanted to kind of show you basically you know what are the steps to do this this is a little more complex right than just you know doing some others although this whole road on the site was pretty darn, darn complex but it's just a couple of processes. It's it's alignment profile, it's intersection design, and targeting. Um, if you if you've looked at some of the other previous webinars I've done, I've I've, I've already showcased this one as well. Um, so I, I've kind of gone over how to kind of do this if you're interested. And of course we have different curves. We have Miami curb in certain spots. We have type F in other spots. And in certain spots we don't have curbing at all, right? All right. So how do we how do we do that? Well, the first thing that you want to do, okay, is you want to do your geometry, and that's just regular 2D. Right. Uh, and also, as you can see here, I used vehicle tracking to kind of make sure everything was working just fine. And, and my, my dumpster would actually fit through there um, and all the driving and everything would be would work out well. OK, so you want to just draw the geometry up. All I, in, in fact, all I actually need really is edge of pavement. All right. So I've got this spot, which is going to be the five foot concrete that needs to be there. Um, and then I have my edge of pavement here. Right. So again, you draw a geometry using regular AutoCAD, the fillet command, the offset command, whatever it takes to kind of get your geometry in there. Just 2D. You're going to have to do that. And of course, you get that approved. And then basically you have to, you know, you, you'll have an idea, of, I, you know, I assume, of, you know, as far as kind of if this will fit in your scenario. OK, you got to do some kind of thinking about that as well. This is a very, very tight um, area, a very tight site. In fact, the reason it's really kind of in a, it's in a weird spot. Uh, but we had uh, basically the, the city came back. Actually, the city initially told the developer, you don't need a dumpster pad. You actually can get away with just um, just everyone's going to have their own garbage. And that's fine. So we designed the entire site up until like 80 percent plans, 90 percent plans <laughs> with no dumpster pad. And everything was going fine with approval. And then all of a sudden the sanitation guy says, no, 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 you know, you actually you have to have one. And we're like, well, you told us you did. Well, he, the developer was he was he was rather upset because they told him one thing, and and now we have to do it. So luckily, we had a spot. We just kind of I looked at their configurations. They had some different criteria you had to design this by. This they have to, you know, of course it'd be nice if it could go in and out, right? They usually like the they like the hammerhead where you can go drive in and you back out and you go this way. There's no room for that. But what you can do is if it's not a major road, which this isn't, you can pull in and they can pull out. And that's what we've we've designed here. Okay. So again, get your geometry the way that it's supposed to be. OK, once that once you've done that, then, of course, you're going to bring it into your model file. OK, and you're going to do things like, you know, right over here. And, and again, this is this is just basic stuff. I'm going to get into the more advanced stuff in a second. But, you know, I've already turned these into feature lines, as you can see here. Right. And of course, if you're not familiar with that, that's feature line, create a feature line from objects. Um, I'm not using a site. This is already feature line, so I'm not going to do it now. But basically, if I were to actually, I'll just draw one out here so you can, you know, just to go through the process here oops hit f1 accidentally there and we'll go to feature line create feature line from objects and if i pick the feature line here or the power line right so I, I never use a site with these projects just because i know there's advantages to sites i just i've never found the best uses i, I just find it's best to 
just leave them be, get, get them out of there. I don't need them talking to each other. We've had, I've had so many issues where I forgot to, ch I changed this one first and it, it was the wrong one and that one won and then my elevations are wrong. I don't bother with sites. If I need to have a point, there is that functionality in, in Civil 3D now in 2021, they added it where you can actually add vertices at crossing points, which is nice. And you, you just manage it yourself. And of course you can do, uh, you know, referencing, you can now, re you know, put a feature line relative to a surface. That's also great functionality. So I don't bother with putting them into a site. It also le causes less corruption in your drawing. One thing I will recommend, no matter what, you should always, 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 this takes a little bit of time, but I don't care. I, I just cannot stress this enough, name these. So this, let's say is my center line of my dumpster pad. I would actually name it center line dumpster. You don't have to use underscores, but I like to, it's just I'm an old school guy. I'm used to DOS days where you couldn't use spaces. But anyway, so you do that. I like this, I, I make a style called generic feature by block, which basically whatever layer this goes on, so the, the style is set to zero is what it actually is, and it's by block. What that means is whatever I set this object to in CAD, it controls how it looks. So I like that. I can control it by layer by my layer properties, and I can plot them if I want to as well. All right. So I, I always use that one. Uh, I will. I would erase them. I wouldn't assign elevations at this point because I'm going to manually do that. But anyway, that's kind of how you do that. And then, of course, you get a feature line, which allows you to make all, you know, you have to have all the editing tools we need. All right. So I've already done that to my geometry. As you can see here, I've also done some editing. I'm not going to go through the entire process because it wouldn't cover the half hour. I might, I'd probably run out of time. But I'm going to show you at least the major parts of the functionality that you do first. So the first thing I have is I've got, I'm going to start with this one here. This one's at zero. You can see by my elevation or my labels, that's at zero there, zero slope, zero everything. Yeah, I'm starting with nothing, all right? You can pretend it's a, basically the supply line that's just been converted to a feature line. So the first step that you want to do is um, some of the things I initially did, I of course started this one here, right? So when I had this one, I went to here, I clicked on the quick elevation edit tool, which is right over here. And then I hover over that point and I click. Again, when you don't know what to do, look to the command line window, specify elevation or surface. Well, I'll just type surface and guess what? I have a road surface so I can you know, pick that and that will actually drape it right to my road, which is 83.431, perfect. So I'm starting at the elevation I needed to. Now, I've already done this part and what I kind of realized was I needed to kind of, you know, uh, I, I kind of figured an average of, I wanted about 2%, but what I realized was I need to have a spot where there was 1.77% and then a little bit less of a slope just to kind of get this to work because I also have other elevations I've got to tie into, right? I've got the road up here. I also have a building right up here and I've got this sidewalk that has to be ADA compliant, right? This whole thing has to be less than negative 4.99%. I don't want railings. So I, I have to I have to make sure this, this could be done Done that way as well. So I just did some first basic calculations and I figured out, okay, I could get away with my pad being 85 feet and the bottom here is six inches lower. So that's 84.5. So once I kind of did that math, you know, measuring some distances from here to here and said, yep, I, I should be able to get that grade. And that's how I came up with those elevations. But for this to work to get the, the cross slope that I wanted, I had to just add a little vertex in the middle. All right. So that's how I kind of figured that out. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to change this one. This one's at zero. So I'm going to start this one from scratch. So I'll go ahead and click on this one. And we'll go ahead and click on quick elevation edit. And I'm going to start over here, right? My elevation I need to get from the surface. So S for surface. Notice how if you look at the command line window, it tells you that road was the surface. If that's the wrong one, you can always pick a different surface. But that's what I want. Press enter. Okay. Um, I don't, I never have rebuild automatic turned on because of course it does take a good amount of time. It chugs along. It's a pretty big site. So I'll press escape because I, that's um, actually, I, mean, I, I take that back. I should have gone back to that. There's the other elevation I need to change that to. So let me actually go back to that command. Uh, once it lets me here. And we'll go ahead and pick quick elevation edit again. And now I do want to change this one because this one here does need to be at 84.5. Because like I said, I figured that out that this right here, all these elevations will need to, um, you know, match up, you know, uh, over here and over here and over here, right? So that's now done. All right. I'll just press escape. Now, since I've already done the center line because I did that first, I want the road to slope down at 2% towards the east. All right. So that basically means what I have to do is a couple of things. So if you look at my center line here, what I did was I added some elevation points right here where the PCs, PTs are for this feature line, because I want this one to win and I want this to project up at 2%. 
what that allows me to do is if I pick my feature line, I can then pick the reference, set elevation by reference, and shift right click endpoint. I'm gonna make sure I get the endpoint. As I always tell you, make, make sure you look here. Look at your status bar because I want to make sure that, especially if I have like other geometry there, it's not going to zero or some other elevation. So 84.148, I'll click there. And then now I'll click here and type positive 2% because that's the grade that I want that to be from, right? Now, what I would have done beforehand is I would have added these feature lines to my top surface. That way, when I rebuild it, I can see it updated automatically. And you notice how I've got these. Um, surface slope labels, I put them all over the damn place. And I know everyone, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the guys in my work say, what what the heck are you doing? You have so many, but guess what? It's a dynamic way for me to see visually immediately if something's wrong, right? So I, I don't care that I have a thousand everywhere, all right? Same exact thing. So we'll go ahead and select the feature line I want to edit, click on this right here, shift right click snap here, and then I want to go up at 2%. And notice how now this matches that. And of course, this is at now, I have a 2% slope that's coming down from this one here, okay? So that's kind of some of the little th the things that you do first is again, do your center line first, and then you can do the other ones as well. Again, as you'll notice here, I did the same thing on this side. Up here, down here, I need to do a little bit steeper because it's just the way that I needed to, this to work because I have to tie in up here, obviously, okay? So that's kind of the stuff that you that you do. All right, so once you have your feature line geometry, you're kind of ready to go because my whole goal, as you probably saw from the first drawing, is to add this to my corridor model. So a lot, the first thing I actually, I had someone ask me, uh, hey, why don't you just do a, you should do alignment and profile. And then, you know, that and it's just intersection design. Eh, so I don't want to bother with that. It's just, it's too much of a pain. Um, one of the things that you can also do, just so you know, is I don't know if I did it for this one, but if I go to the elevation editor here and I bring this up here, yeah, actually I did not, but I could do this. Let me pull it off my other monitor here. Again, the great thing about uh, the new functionality, I, I think it was, I forgot what version they did it in. Um, let me hold the control key there. Is right now this is relative to nothing. But if I go ahead and click on relative to road, you'll notice that it actually, makes it relative right exactly the way I want it to, okay? So here I want the, um, relative to surface, because this is that spot that I'm actually, that's actually on the road. So this is the cool part. It's a little, it's acting a little slow, but you, you get the idea. And then what I can do is I can click on here, hold the shift key down and pick on this one, and then just say, actually, they're, they're already set to absolute, that's fine. That way they lock down there. So they're not locked to the surface. They're actually locked down to what I want them to be. Of course, I can still change them with the feature line tools. That's fine. But this way, if this road changes, notice how it, now it's saying, it's saying 84.431, it's grayed out. So this is completely locked to the surface, all right? So if that road changes, guess what? It'll, I'll, I'll know that something needs to be updated, okay? All right, so moving along, I'll move into here because we got 10 minutes here before I wanna, or 10, 15 minutes. All right, so I've already done, so now basically I've added those to um, the surface, but now I wanna add them to my, I, actually I didn't add to my surface, I add them to the corridor model, this part here. But I didn't add this one yet because what you can do with the feature line, this is the, the great part is, you know, with alignments and profiles, you can, we know we can of course add those to corridor models. Well, you can also add feature lines. So the way I did this modeling, again, a lot of people say, oh, I just do it from the center line, but you have to think about it. So when I thought about that, initially I said, yeah, I'll just do a center line, but there's a lot of tight little curves here and funky geometry. It's a little bit different. So I don't want to just, you know, I, could I do the main line here and then do curb returns? Sure, but why bother? Why waste the time of doing an alignment and profile? All I have to do is I'm gonna use this line, this feature line right here as a baseline and this feature line right here as a baseline. And I will project to here, all the way along, right? To here, to here, to here, to here, and then eventually to even here, and I can project that to my offset alignment and profile. Now, you do not wanna make this one feature line. Do not do that, okay? Make these two totally separate uh, baselines or feature lines, right? Notice how that's a separate one, and this one here is a, is a separate one. Whoops, wrong thing. All right, so this side right here is a separate one right? Because it's going to just, it helps with, with the modeling, right? So I'll pick my corridor model. I'll go to add baseline. 
feature line. I'll pick in the drawing. This is why it makes sense to name them. So I'll pick the feature line. EP dumpster number two, that's EP dumpster number one, right? So click OK here. It gets the horizontal and vertical automatically because it has what it has to it, right? It, it has the horizontal and vertical already on it, right? Now, what I need to do, just like with any intersection design or any kind of modeling, is now I need to add a region, all right? So again, if you look over here, click Add Region. Now, one of the key things, first you pick your baseline, we'll just do that. The key thing you have to realize is your stationing. So my curb returns, assemblies, are all going to the inside. Uh, they, they have the lane that goes to the inside. So you might have to reverse your feature lines, depending on what you want to do, right? The stationing for the one on the right side over here goes up this way because my lane is on the inside. For this one, it goes down this way because the lane is on the inside. So I'll just do a shift right click, go to endpoint. I'm gonna start at zero. And then I do this piecemeal. You could do the whole thing, but I find piecemeal works the best. So I'm gonna go to the endpoint of right here. I'll pick my curb return type F, click okay. And the only thing I need to target is the lane. Notice how I don't give it a, I don't tell it the side left or right. There is no left or right. This lane is my curb return. It needs to target whatever it is I need to target. In this case, we're going to target the feature line, which is this one here that's at 84.5. So that's dumpster EP1. And then I'll click over here and do the same thing. Wouldn't it be great if you could pick from a drop down of feature lines? Well, you didn't hear this from me, but in the next, in the future versions of Civil 3D, they're actually working on some really cool functionality to do that. So, all right, hit okay. And now I've got that. Now, the cool thing about this, so it's gonna just target in that for that one little region of the stationing that I defined there. Give it a second to kind of catch up. Now, here's the cool thing, I can keep going. So it's saying from what station to what station. So I'll do a shift right click endpoint. I'll snap right there. Now, my goal is to go to right here where this intersects that one right there, right? That's where that needs to go to right there. However, now, again, this may be with just this kind of this specific geometry. I found when I did that, it blew up. It kind of messed up my regions. They messed up like really weird. In fact, they just they just disappeared like they, they were there, but they didn't show up. The model part didn't show up. And so what I, I just redid it. And what I found was if I, I'm just going to put it over here. Just just go to any spot. It doesn't matter. I'm going to have another region that goes over here because this region over here needs to target the offset alignment profile. We'll pick OK here because I'll show you why the fix for this is not really hard at all. So I'm going to change this. This needs to go. We'll delete this here. This is going to go to my center line. Feature line. And same thing with the vertical. So we'll delete this one. Pick the center line feature line. Oops, let's do that again. Click OK and OK. I'm going to add this one as well, all right? And then I'll show you how to fix this one the best way I found it, okay? All right, so I'll go ahead and shift right click here. And just so you know, I did draw a line. I recommend you do that. This is like a non-plotting layer. Uh, I drew a line here uh, perpendicular to that, right? Because that's how this needs to work. So I just went, so I'll just go over here and I'll go to the endpoint of this one here, curve return F. And in this case, I don't have a feature line. Wrong one, pick here. Let's get rid of that. I'll change this to alignments. And I don't remember the name. I don't have to. I'll just pick on the pick button here. And we'll pick my alignment. Click add. That's for the horizontal. Then for the vertical, I need that alignment's profiles. So these are offset alignments that have offset profiles that automatically come from the center line alignment. That's the really cool thing about this is that it automatically does it. And I don't have to worry about it. if my profiles change. Well, guess what? All those offset profiles, they also change as well. All right. All right. All right. So I've targeted that one. And then I'll just go ahead and press uh, escape here. Let's just go ahead and end that. All right. So the only thing I need to do now is I need to actually um, edit the frequency, right? Because these the, the frequency here is just, the, 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 it's obviously too little, right? That's what we do with intersection design. So I'll go ahead and just, while well, well, it's still selected, notice how I haven't even unselected. Actually, let, I take that back. Let me, let, let's edit this first because that, that way it won't have to model so many frequencies. So the fix for this is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Just pick on this grip here. It, again, I found this is the best way it works. And here's the thing. One time it may just be fine and one time it may not be. I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't know why it didn't work in the first place. But I'll just pick on this here. 
and it does get really slow. And what I'll do is I'll do a shift right click and you got to pause a little bit because this is a big quarter model and I'll just go nearest. I move my cursor close by here and then click. And it should now model, it should change the stationing of that model to this location. Okay. I can give it a chance to catch up here. And there we go. All right. So now I will go to the edit frequency. And we'll go ahead and click on the first one here. And of course, I'll change my tangents to one, my curve increments to one, and my vertical curves to one. I don't have any spirals, so I don't care about changing those at all. And we'll do this region here. One, one, and one. I don't even think I have any vertical curves either. It's just um, kind of habit to change it there. And then we'll go here. Last one. One there. Oh, and it looks like it didn't actually change that. Well, let's try that again. This is what I meant by it. it, it sometimes it was acting a little hokey. I did eventually get it to work, but um, let me try changing it. Or let's go this way instead. So we'll pick here and shift right click nearest. And I think if I go farther down, that is what fixed it. I can't remember now. Let's see if that fixes it. Like I said, it, it was weird how this was acting. It must be because the geometry is just trying its best to kind of figure out how you how it should do it. There we go. We got it now. All good. All right, and if I go ahead and select my road surface, it's all good. All right. I might lower that a little bit, that feature line, edit that feature a little bit to kind of get the grade. Maybe that's what I think that's what I did originally because that's a little steep of a slope. Um, again, it's really simple with these labels to see that. Uh, if I pick this here and hover over here, let me turn my snaps off real quick um, and turn polar tracking on. Uh, it's at, well, okay. That's showing 2%. I don't think that's great. That, that's wrong. Let's go to the road surface. Yeah, so it's at 4%. Um, I, and that's going here. So it's going from three to four down to two. So or that's three there. So I, I would probably put a, but just, just kind of set the grade slope. Maybe just, just, just change the slope a little bit there, or maybe insert a PI right there and then just lower that down just by a tiny bit to get that down a little bit. But that's basically kind of how that, that's, uh, um, that's done. All right. Are there any questions? All right. So let me take a look here. <clears throat> Do I have just a couple that came through? Uh, so the first one I'm seeing here, how did you get the garbage truck 3D model? Okay. Uh, um, so first of all, I'll just, so in your browser, if you just do a, a, a search for, um, uh, oh, let's see here, AutoCAD. AutoCAD. I'll show my the browser here. So I just did AutoCAD download 3D garbage truck. And one of the best sites that I like for any kind of 3D models is GrabCAD. So if you go to grabcad.com, you have to create an account. It's all free. It doesn't matter. You can basically, and you can see here, I, I've already done this. Um, I tr it took me three before I found one that worked. But basically, just download any of the models. Because here's the really cool thing, all right? Uh, if you're not familiar with this, I'll just do it in this drawing here. Uh, let's just change this back to to your wireframe. Go to top. So there's if you just type in the import command, this is AutoCAD now, not Civil 3D. You'll notice that AutoCAD has the ability to import 3D models. So this is the website. This is this download a zip file, and this is a SolidWorks model. And basically, I um, I downloaded um, that model from the 3D model here, okay? And, and, and uh, I'm sorry, from that website. And then you 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 do the conversion. You just you pick the one. I think I picked the biggest, largest file file size. I think it was this one here. And then when I did that, it brought them in. Come on, whoops. I'm trying to cancel. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Back here. Uh, I actually have it separate. 
a separate drawing here, which is right there. So you'll get a little message that says, "Hey, um, it's bringing it's bringing a three a three D model." Okay. Um, and so if I, if you look here, of course, that's really simple. I just bring it to a, a totally blank drawing, and, and I've got that. Now, how do you get that to your surface? Is by doing it this way. So let me go to the finished product here, which is over here. So if you pick your surface, so I want this to go to the road surface. And then if I go to the move to surface command, you can move blocks. And here is the block that got created. And so you just drape it down there. Now a question just came up, can you use vehicle tracking? Wouldn't that be awesome if you could use vehicle tracking to do that? The answer is no. The vehicle tracking 3D objects that get created, if you look at that in 3D, they are not actual blocks. It is dynamically creating those 3D solids based upon the actual dimensions of the actual vehicle tracking interface. I, I, I thought the same thing. I was like, that, that was my first step was, let me just, I'll just, you know, I'll do that and I'll extract it. And I, I checked with Autodesk and no, it doesn't, it actually is pretty cool. It actually is dynamically creating those 3D models when you're doing, when you're seeing 3D models from the, the vehicle tracking stuff. So it doesn't do that. Okay. Uh, any great. other questions? Yeah, we did have another one here. And if anybody else has any other questions, definitely feel free to write those in. Uh, what if my box culvert has different uh, invert elevations? Ah, yes, that's a good, actually good question. So basically uh, the example I showed you here, I, it, it's a flat box culvert. So the it's just gonna go in there and you don't have to have it. But there are times obviously when, you know, this end here, right, needs to be lower than that end there. So there is a command called 3D rotate. All right, and what you want to do is start that command. Again, when you don't know what to do, look to the command line window. Select objects, pick here. Now it brings up this 3D, uh, this looks this is like, it's a, it's a gizmo. Now here's the really cool thing. So what you can do is you can move this thing by simply, I think if you, you pick the base point, which is right here, there we go, right? Notice how I can keep picking the base point. Actually, no, I take that back. It is asking for rotation axis. So first you pick your rotation, your, your, your base point. Then what you do is, here's what I would have done first, actually. I would have drawn a line um, from here. This is what I would have done. I would have drawn a line from here to here. Let's say that's my uh, location. Then, so my elevation is 93.3. These are the same elevations. I would have changed the end one to, let's say, 94, right? So let's say that's what that needs to be. So now I've got to go by, right? It's just a, it's just a, too much of a pain if I try and do it with the, with the other one. So I'll just do type 3 to rotate now. I'll pick my object and I'll change my base point to the end of this here. Now, what you do, right, is, and I'm colorblind and I always get this wrong too. You look at these, these are like faces. So I think I'm going to pick on this one here because, let me just pick the angle. So I'll just snap to the end point here, right, the box cover. Yeah, that's the correct one. Right, notice how it's going up and down along that face. See the, see the shading? So the red one would go in, the, in this face. The blue one goes uh, the flat face. So what I would do is just pick that face there and then snap to the end point right there. And now you have you know, two different elevations. All right, so that's how you can, it, 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 it definitely will take some practice using that 3D rotate, that 3D rotate command. I, I mess it up all the time, um, but that's basically how, how you can do that. Any other questions? All right. Perfect. Uh, I think that's it for now. So uh, thank you guys all so much for being here. Thank you, Seth, for presenting. Um, and uh, again, if you guys need to reach out to us, if you have any, uh, if you're wanting any information, you have any questions, anything like that that we can help with, please give us a call at 305-445-6480 or email us at info at ddscad.com, just like you see here on the screen. Okay, thank you all so much for attending and have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody.